the familiar site of Commonwealth war graves. You'll find them near many of the battlefields of recent British wars. But these are not in some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. This is England. In Shotley Churchyard lie the remains of men killed in action on the 5th of August 1914 aboard HMS Amphion. Most histories of the First World War record the first British Army casualties as being at Mons on the 21st of August 1914. However, the first naval casualties occurred a lot earlier than that, in fact barely 24 hours into the war. And it was a lot nearer home as well, just over the horizon here in the North Sea. The Amphion was a light cruiser based in Harwich. On the 5th of August she was on patrol with two destroyers, the Lance and the Landrail. They spotted a German mine layer, the Königin Louise, trying to lay mines near the entrance to the Haven ports. She'd only been requisitioned by the German Navy, the Kaiser Marine, on the 3rd of August from her previous role as a ferry. On spotting the British ships, the Königin Louise made a run for it, but the British ships gave chase and opened fire. The Amphion struck the killer blow and the Königin Louise's captain decided to abandon ship and scuttle the vessel. It was the first Kaiser Marine ship sunk in the war. The British ships picked up 46 survivors. But at about 6.30pm on her way back to Harwich on the 5th of August, HMS Amphion struck one of the mines the Conning and Louise had laid the previous day. Casualties were high and the ship was left drifting helplessly to strike further mines and sink early the next day. It became the first British naval vessel lost during the First World War. 165 people died, including 18 German prisoners of war. The wreck is now a war grave. Bodies of men that were recovered were buried near their hometowns, but four were laid to rest here in St Mary's Churchyard in Shotley. This includes Albert Martin of Milford Haven, who was one of the very first deaths on Amphion. A few of the dead German prisoners are also buried at Shotley. The graves are a poignant reminder of the cost of war and of freedom. The people who lost their lives on HMS Amphion were the first of many. No one thought at the beginning of the war in 1914 that it would drag on for four years at the cost of 16 million lives. The scale of death in the Great War was without precedent. Such was the nature of total war that its effect reached right down into almost every community. Young men who had the expectation of life before them had their lives extinguished in the brutality of modern warfare. And it began just a few nautical miles from this spot. The Great War was supposed to be a war that would end all wars. How wrong we were. Within 30 years there was another world war. And today we still experience the sights and sounds of war each time we turn on the TV or go online. The author and philosopher C.S. Lewis, himself a soldier in World War I, once said this, What does war do to death? It certainly doesn't make it more frequent. A hundred percent of us die and the percentage can't be increased. Yet war does something to death. It forces us to remember it. What does being reminded of death do to us? Does it put us into denial? Or does it prompt us to think of matters of life and eternity? I'd like to hope it's the latter. For me, I found the way of peace to be through following Jesus Christ, because I find that in following him, I find that I have peace with God and also peace with other people. Jesus said this, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. The marking of the centenary of the First World War reminds us again of the reality of war and of death. But it also reminds us of the struggle for peace. Yet there's no struggle to finding peace with God because it's found through knowing and following and trusting Jesus.